Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm just starting a random reading vlog. A lot of my plans this month have not come together, but that's okay. I did do my music themed reading vlog, but in that um, video I did not get to the songbook of Benny Lament by Amy Harmon. I am still waiting for this to come in on audiobook. And I am also working on a trilogy reading vlog for this series and I am having trouble I'm still it says about two weeks left for this book to come in on audiobook and I've read every other book in the trilogy through audiobook so I really want to wait to read that so these are the last two books that I put on my like official unofficial hopeful February TBR um, and I'm just going to put these on the back burner for now who knows I still have time they still could come in this month but it's not looking good so I need to pick up something else and I thought I should take a book off of my 22 and 2022 list and read Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson this is actually Jacqueline's um, book she let me borrow and I need to return it to her so I should go ahead and read it now <laughs> so I can send it back to her but um all I know is that I have read I think three Tiffany D. Jackson books now I believe I could be wrong two or three definitely two anyway this is the one that everybody raves about this is the one that everybody loves um so i'm really looking forward to reading this and seeing you know what i think how i feel because i don't know if it's because it's i think it's a combination of her writing ya which i don't really read and enjoy a lot of anymore and two i think she tries to tackle too many social justice issues in books with other themes and topics that are also pretty heavy and pretty deep and she's not able to do all of those subjects justice I like that she's tackling them especially in YA but I just don't think that we're spending enough time to kind of finalize those themes and those topics okay so in this one we have two friends and I'm not sure of anybody's name yet so you have Claudia who goes to school and her friend Monday Charles doesn't show up and nobody seems to be noticing this except for Claudia um, so I think it's gonna be about like her looking for her friend but I don't know it just seems like such an interesting premise oh the other Tiffany Lee Jackson that I want to pick up maybe possibly is allegedly because I hear good things about that too. But this says it's a mesmerizing punch in the gut story about the power of friendship and the horrors hiding right in front of us. And that is a blur by Lori Hulse Anderson, the author of Speak and Chains, and I love that author. Um, so I'm really, really hoping that I like this one. All right, I just finished eating my bagel for breakfast and I did start Monday's Not Coming. I am currently on page 12, no, 13. And I am listening to this on audiobook using the Libby app. So that's good. And I do think it's gonna read, you know, fairly quickly. I think I should share some theories before getting into the book and getting clues. Um, what I know so far is that, um, what is her name? Daphne? No, Claudia. Okay, Claudia went to go stay with her grandmother over the summer. Now she is back home. It's the first day of school. Monday did not show up. I guess they usually sent letters to each other um, over the summer. That didn't happen. When she got home, she tried calling her. The phone was disconnected and she tried calling her on the first day of school that didn't happen so now she's going to school hoping to see monday and monday didn't show up um so that's where i am so far so what could possibly not make this eighth grader show up to school because that's what grade uh claudia's in 
Um, I think <laughs> the only logical thing that I can think of is that she got pregnant and she got sent away so that she could like be, you know, have the baby like nine months and then have the baby and then maybe put it up for adoption or something like that. And in the synopsis, it does say that she was missing for a year. Okay, yes, so right here in September, the very first paragraph says, this is the story of how my best friend disappeared, how nobody noticed she was gone except for me, and how nobody cared until they found her one year later. So I don't know if she got pregnant and she got sent away by family, or if she ran away, or because she was pregnant, or if she just like ran away in general. Um, maybe she was escaping like an abusive uncle or I don't know, boyfriend or I don't know. Um, but this is all happening in Washington, DC. So I'm very, very curious. I mean, I've been to Washington, DC myself. I live very close to there and it is easy to disappear in that city. Um, so those are my theories. Pregnancy, she ran away, was sent away. Um, things like that. Um, why nobody is noticing is because the family's not going to outright say we sent her away because she's pre she was pregnant because she's only in eighth grade. And that would be like a huge like shame on the family maybe or something like that. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you necessarily if my theory is right because I don't want to spoil the book. But I feel like in a book like this, you have to theorize what's actually happening. I made it to page 158 today, which is amazing. 150 pages. Are you kidding me? Um, it is reading very quickly. Plus I have the audiobook. Um, but in about an hour, I'm going to hop on with my book club. We're doing a zoom reading sprints. They do these every week, but I hardly ever hop on just because it's so many people that hop on and I just get that like anxiety about it. But I think that's what I'm going to do tonight. And then tomorrow I'm doing reading sprints on my channel. So hopefully I'll finish this quickly and keep this reading train going. I watched two Disney movies today and um, I watched Enchanto or however you say that one. That one was so beautiful and magical. And then I watched Luca and oh, I was crying at the end. It was, oh, it was so, uh, it was just so great. Uh, just ran to the grocery store, got back. I'm eating some pita chips. I freaking love these and I'm trying to initiate a return, but I'm having difficulty printing my return label. And my husband is hanging out with his friend and I'm having trouble getting my computer on to do that. So I'm just gonna sit here and chill out for a little bit, eat some pitas. Um, so far the book is going, like I said, it's going very quickly. Um, it's kind of, the writing, how it set up the timeline is very different um, because you have, it's going by month. Uh, I think I showed you that in the beginning. So it has like September and then, you know, later on it has October, but it also has um, like the after, the before, um, one year before the before. Like, it's just kind of confusing. I'm hoping it kind of all pays off in the end. Um, but yeah, no one's, even though that she is looking for her friend and she has told teachers, they've gone to the guidance counselor, um, she's told her mom, her mom has tried to help her. Her mom told her dad to like get this guy's number or something like that. They've been to her house twice. Once, I think her mom said she went to her aunt's house. And then when she went there with her mom, she said, oh, she's with her dad. 
And then she ran into her, like either her sister or her brother or something like that, um, Monday's sister or brother, at the grocery store and she was asking them and they were like, go away, leave it alone, you know, all of this. And I'm thinking, what, like, why can't they just tell her? Like, and then also, I don't know if it's gonna be like abuse or something like that because like she had these weird bruises on her and I don't know, I'm just, I have no idea where it's going, but it's an okay story. You know, it is just kind of jumping all over the place. Good morning, friends. I'm here with a reading update. I made it to page 220 last night. So I read 50% of this book yesterday. I also watched three Disney movies. So there is a balance between watching and reading but also this is just reading very fast so i'm hoping in march to do a what i've been watching lately hopefully don't hold me to it but i will fill you in on all of that i've been watching and it hasn't really been a lot to be completely honest because the main thing we're watching is the last kingdom we watched season one season two and now we're in season three and in march there's going to be the fifth season's going to drop so we're trying to make our way there but we only watch like one episode a night so anyway i made it to page 220 and i'm concerned that they find a body i don't know i don't know i don't know what's going to happen i'm just theorizing but there have been parts in the after and I think there was some abuse going on and also like there was this guy that said he was gonna like tell everybody that they were together and he didn't and then she tried again and he didn't and I just I don't know where it's gonna go honestly but I am very intrigued I just uh, I'm just so like sad about just so many things that are happening in here um to Monday because like she doesn't seem like she has like <laughs> Charlie's looking at me right now let me show you oh my god <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at me. <laughs> She's just staring at me. Okay, now she's not. <laughs> Don't stare at me. Anyway, oh, anyway, um, she doesn't seem to have really a good home life. Her mom seems like addicted to drugs but I don't know if that came like before or after because there is a part where she seems not on drugs but I don't really know there's also a lot in here to do with like gentrification and things like that but not too in depth which is like what I am finding most Tiffany D Jackson books to be is they touch on these really important topics but they don't go enough in depth I just finished this book and I think people are gonna be pissed I'm thinking it's like two stars I'm in the process of making dinner so I'm gonna have to make it quick maybe I'll do a more formal check-in tomorrow at some point but I need to make dinner because I'm doing sprints tonight and I want to eat a nice dinner with you know Daniel but anyway this book just pissed me off I mean, the writing was good, it was suspenseful, but the timeline was really throwing me off and I didn't know what all of those timelines meant and I mean, obviously what was driving the plot forward is to figure out where's Monday. I mean, that's the whole freaking point of the book. I'm here with my final thoughts of Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. Um, I don't have the physical copy anymore. It's out in the mailbox on its way back to Jacqueline. I'm rating the story two out of five stars. Um, I think it is her sophomore novel. I think allegedly is her debut and then uh, Monday's Not Coming is her sophomore novel. I have also read Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I have also read White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. 
and I think one other one maybe maybe not anyway the point is is I do not think I'm gonna pick up any more Tiffany D Jackson one because I think that it's YA and there's very few YA I am enjoying number two I think she tries to pack too many social issues social justice issues human rights issues into her novels and they don't have time to breathe properly and I don't think she's offering any solutions I think she's just telling you about the problem and then it kind of is what it is in her novels um and I like a little bit more of a stance one way or another if we're gonna go there let's go there let's talk about it you know and that's why I think the it's the YA part of the story that I don't like because I don't think in a YA novel you should probably go into too much depth because for the first time you are bringing up issues deeper issues and themes and messages that a young adult probably doesn't know about but as a fully grown adult who's married who's lived a thousand lives I feel like I do know of these issues and I don't think she's offering anything new that I don't already know in all of the books that I've read of hers she's bringing up things that I already know so I think I'm just like out of that age range and um but as far as the story itself you have Claudia who spends the summers with her grandmother and over the summer she usually writes her best friend um Monday they exchange like pen pals over the summer um they're basically like sisters soulmates if you will like they're attached at the hip everybody in town knows it their teachers know it their parents know it it's just like a thing. Wherever there's Claudia, there's Monday. Wherever there's Monday, there is Claudia. Um, but over the summer when she, like when her mom picks her up from the airport, she's like, you know, have you seen Monday? I haven't, you know, gotten any letters from her. And then as soon as she gets home, she tries calling Monday's house and then Monday doesn't answer the phone. And she's like, what's going on? Okay, fine. I'll see her at school. So then school starts and Monday doesn't come to school. And the next day, Monday doesn't come to school. So she goes to Monday's house and is like, where's Monday? And they're like, you know, um, she's at her aunt, she's at her dad, she's playing hide and seek, she's in the closet, like, but no one ever says like, here's Monday. And Claudia is just really confused, like, okay, mom, dad, we have to figure out what's going on with Monday because she's not coming to school, she's not showing up, she's not answering the phone, like something is wrong. And you're going throughout the whole novel with this mystery of where is Monday? What's happening? What happened? Like, what's going on? And I really did like it was compulsively readable. Don't get me wrong. Um, I read it so quickly and it was over 400 pages. Um, so it wasn't that. But one thing that I didn't like as I was reading it, it I think I pointed it out was that the title like the timeline of the whole story, it would have like the months and then it would also have like the before and the after and then the before the before and the before the after and the after the before and it was just it was like what what is happening um and I just in my head that was too many timelines um to kind of keep track of like what was happening and stuff like that and I did get a good sense of like their friendship and stuff like that just from Claudia and I will say that the whole mystery the whole book you're really trying to find out what happened to Monday. And I don't want to say anything about like what happened or how that reveal made me feel because, or put any, I don't know, adjectives to that because I think it could possibly spoil it. So I'm trying to keep this spoiler free, obviously. But there was another part to the story that was revealed at the end that I did not like. Um, and that is what has me so freaking frustrated because I feel like it was confusing and it didn't have to be confusing. I almost think it would have been better if we would have like known that earlier in the book. And I think a lot more of it would have made sense to the reader. But I guess it's like that double shock that you know the author wanted or whatever but I was just really upset by that second reveal I don't know what to really call it without a spoiler you know um but yeah I didn't like that I didn't like how it was handled and that was a no for me so 
two stars for that one and like I said I don't think I'll be picking up anything new by Tiffany D. Jackson but I'm glad she's found her audience. People love her books. Two of my really good friends Jordan from Sorry Book Solid and um Jacqueline from Jack the channel Jacqueline. Um Jacqueline is her favorite young adult author and um it's one of Jordan's favorite you know authors of all time too so tiffany d jackson has definitely found her audience um and i'm happy about that i'm happy for people that love her books they're just not for me okay so clean slate what am i reading next surprise surprise i'm reading a ya book so i am reading this but this doesn't feel ya and i wanted to read this so bad because it just seemed so cozy and it set like kind of during winter time at the beginning of the year well the end of the year slash beginning of the year it's like set like right around like christmas and new year's and all of that and it is a castle in the clouds by kirsten gear I think that's how you say the last name um and I just I adore this cover so much it looks cozy and it's set in the mountains in the Swiss Alps and there is this really luxe luxe hotel and because of just like the environment that it's in they refer to it as the castle in the clouds and our main character is Sophie Spark and she is an intern at this grand hotel here and she does everything from like being a babysitter to doing laundry to working in the spa kind of like she kind of does it all whatever they tell her to do she's an intern you know um and last night I started this on my sprints and I started like on in the prologue and now I'm on page 94 so that's really cool that I was able to read that much on sprints um and I just really am enjoying it so far it's it does have like the main plot I think just kind of got revealed uh kind of where I was in the story as I stopped reading last night um in the beginning is very like atmospheric you're getting to know the characters and the hotel and the surrounding and just like the hotel guests and stuff like that and I'm trying not to like focus like too hard on like all of the guests that are coming but a lot of people come to this hotel for this certain ball that they have and it's like a family tradition so they always come to the hotel during this time and it's a very busy time of year and all of that and she's kind of running around like like a chicken with her head cut off trying to you know do all of the things and um yeah all right as you know i am currently reading castle in the clouds by kristen greer and if you want to know the vibes the storyline the atmosphere the characters the plot i'm gonna say it's the baby of green glass house by kate milford which is a middle grade book mixed with the maid by nita prose if these two books had a baby this is the book that you would get. It has the cozy vibes of both of these. This is middle grade. This is adult. This is YA. So it's in the middle, you know, like the baby. And because it shares traits of both. Um, I wouldn't say so much like the character in here, but I mean a little bit. Um, if you've read this, um, the main character Molly talks about how she loves her uniform and how it makes her feel. And in this one, Sophie Spark also talks about how much her uniform makes her feel and stuff like that. Um, even though this is YA, it doesn't necessarily read like a typical YA maybe it's just because it's like super cozy and there's a lot of adults in here um but how there's kind of like the mystery in here where you're trying to figure out the guests and stuff like that it's it's like this but this also has a mystery like because someone dies you know but it's not that it's more of like the mystery of this with the characters of this i don't know it's just it is a total mix of these so if you've read these and you want more like this but like a ya version then i would highly recommend this one um it's not blow your socks off like a five star read at least for me but it's super cute and super cozy and i think it would be perfect to read in winter um 
during the holidays like Christmas and New Year's and stuff like that. Um, it's set in the Swiss Alps at this hotel, this luxury hotel, much like this one. And this one is set in an inn. Also, if you've read like one of these and you want something similar, I would say they're all kind of a little similar in a way because this one is at a luxury hotel like this one, but this is at an inn. And this one is set in winter time around Christmas time. So is this one. Um, and this one, it's Milo and his parents live at this inn. And it's supposed to be like Christmas time and there's usually no guests. But all of these guests start showing up. Um, yeah. And I, I really like this. I actually want to continue in this series. I don't know if it's like a trilogy or there's going to be more books. But um, you have the ghost at the green glass house. The blue crown. So maybe just a trilogy. Not sure. But I definitely want to read more of this because it was just so good. Um, but yeah. So that's kind of my thoughts so far without like giving away too much of this. But it is a mix of those books. I will stand by that. But I'm almost done with this. I am currently on page 254. So let's see how long this one is. This one is 318 pages. So I will definitely finish this one up today. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just finished it. And it is so cozy and cute. I just, oh! So let me like think about my rating. I'm thinking it might be like a four stars, but like a three or four stars. Oh my gosh, it was so cute, you guys. I literally just put the dust jacket back on. Um, yeah. I really liked it. It's so freaking cozy. All right, I am here with my final thoughts of The Castle in the Clouds by Kristen Greer. I really enjoyed this. It was originally written in German and it was translated and the translation was great, I think. Like I said before, it is the baby of The Green Glass House by Kate Milford and The Maid by Nita Prose. This is the YA version of those stories. It's not like... It does have a mystery in it. It also has a little bit of a love triangle in it, but that's not the focus of the story. The focus of the story is just Sophie's like day-to-day -day life working as an intern at this hotel. Like she deals with guests, she babysits the children or she helps babysit the children. Um, she works in the spa area and things like that. And along the way, there are two people that come to the hotel um, that she kind of like likes and thinks about kissing and all of this. Um, and there's also a, mystery but the mystery doesn't really take place until like the last like third of the book so don't go into this one thinking like oh I'm gonna be able to solve a mystery it, it's not a mystery it's really just a fun cozy wintertime read set around the holidays like Christmas and New Year's Eve and all of that um and it's just it's charming it's sweet it's wholesome it's all of those things so yeah I really enjoyed this one and I'm rating it four out of five stars I rated the green glass house five stars when I read it um that was a couple of years ago and I rated the maid by Nita Prose four stars so I'm rating this one four stars as well I I do have my full written reviews of both of the books that I read. I will try to remember to link them in the description box down below if you are interested in checking out those. But you can always follow me on Goodreads and the Story Graph to get like my full thoughts of all of the books that I read. Um, yeah, so that's it for this reading vlog. I know it was just like two books, but this really kind of I don't know. It felt good to be reading some books and chatting with you guys. Um, I'm going to, oh, there's Charlie right there. I am going to start another reading vlog following this one and I'm really excited about it because it is a thriller reading vlog. It is an author taste test and I realized I haven't read many, if any, thrillers this year and that's a problem. So we're going to change that. I'm going to read two thrillers and I'm so excited. And you'll see that video, you know, 
sometime coming soon. But anyway, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you're having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye guys.